Today, we're going to be testing out a laser engraver to see how difficult it is to start using as a beginner and what kinds of cool projects it's capable of making. Clearly, we have a lot of boxes going on over here. This was all very kindly sent over by Adam Stack, and the main piece in this pile is their new A24 Pro laser engraver. But the A24 Pro is marketed as a great machine for beginners, which is perfect for me because right now I have no clue what I'm doing with any of this yet. A laser engraver is always something I've considered adding to my workshop though, and this was an amazing opportunity to finally look at doing just that. So while I unbox all of these goodies, let's talk a bit about why one of these machines has always been something of interest to me. Laser engravers really are one of those tools that do things that you really can't achieve with a different machine. As the name suggests, you can obviously engrave a wide variety of materials, but you can also cut things with this machine as well. Different machines will have different capabilities depending on their laser power, etc. I believe the A24 Pro has the ability to cut on its own, but I also have an air assist for it, which will enable the machine to cut through thicker materials a lot more efficiently. Now there are just some projects that you may be interested in making where 3D printing really isn't the most suitable for the job. Either it would be more efficient, either for cost or time to not 3D print something, or even material dependent. There have been quite a few projects over the years where I've wished I'd had this technology at my disposal to be able to use for at least a portion of what I've been working on. Hopefully in this video we'll be able to tackle some of those projects and really see what this technology can be used for. You can actually find laser projects the same way you can find models to 3D print on Online, which is pretty cool as well. Now the A24 Pro really doesn't involve much assembly. All you're doing is attaching the laser module and then the cables that go from the laser module to the rest of the frame. They also give you these cable management clips that you just stick onto the back so that it better controls the two cables that come off of the laser module so that they don't accidentally get caught up in anything. And other than that, it's really just plugging in the power cord and the USB cable. In terms of the other boxes and the accessories that I got sent, the first one is this enclosure. Now, Adam Stack has since come out with a specific enclosure for the A24 Pro, but when they originally sent me the machine, they didn't currently have one of those available. Available, so they sent me one of their other enclosures that would also work. Safety is obviously very important, especially when it comes to laser engravers. The laser is essentially burning material away from whatever you're cutting or engraving, so making sure that those fumes are properly ventilated out of your workshop and just in general, as well as the enclosures having the added light protection from the laser and also flame protection. It's definitely one of those really useful accessories that that also will give you peace of mind. In terms of the smaller accessories, we have the rotary chuck, which is used for more cylindrical objects. The roller is also a cylindrical object engraver tool. The air assist, which is to assist in helping to cut thicker materials. And finally, the honeycomb base, which is to help elevate and protect the underneath surface that you're engraving on. Now that everything is out of the box and mostly set up, we're going to move on to the computer setup side of things so that we can actually get some pieces going. First off, here is what my setup was looking like with the engraver actually within the enclosure. I did have to get a larger base so that it actually would fit on my table, and I designed and printed this custom vent end so that I could fit it out my window a lot easier. I'm going to be using Lightburn as my laser engraver software. It's basically like the laser version of a slicer in 3D printing terms. And while this isn't going to be a Lightburn tutorial, just know that when you first plug in the machine, turn it on to Lightburn, you can go in, it will detect the device, and it's overall a fairly simple process to get set up. But to try and set myself up for as much success as possible, I decided to start off with some material tests. This is something you can actually create right within Lightburn. You can modify everything from the amount of tests that it will do to the intervals and speed settings, as well as laser power. And when you have all of that selected, it will give you something like this that you can then run through your laser to figure out what the most ideal settings for that material will be for your machine. Just a super useful reference point to have. You can also run these off for cutting as opposed to just the engraving side of things. And this I feel like is really the trick to setting yourself up for success because it's a very small test that you can do on this material. So you're not going to be wasting time and material excessively accidentally just, you know, not quite having your speed and laser power percentage settings dialed in just right for what you're trying to accomplish. 
There also could be the point where there could be multiple settings that would work well for whatever you're attempting to accomplish. This could be a little more applicable to the actual cutting of material where you might realize that you could use less laser power if you cut a little slower instead of blasting the laser at 100% power all of the time. Because you can see here, the machine had no issues cutting out all of the different squares despite having vastly different speed and laser power settings. So now that I had those tests out of the way and had a better understanding of what the types of settings I would be looking at needing to use, I figured I would start my first project. I thought a simple medallion sort of ornament of my logo would be a nice first test, not only to see how it would engrave, but also to cut out the material and I did choose to start off with three millimeter birch plywood. Wood tends to be the most standard and simple material to begin with. You know, for a first project from someone who has never used a laser engraver in their life, this is pretty impressive. The detail on this thing is incredible. The engraving could be a bit darker, but I think that's because I set it to engrave as an image, so it essentially engraved it in grayscale, and since this design isn't actually like black on the back, it's like blues and purples and stuff, it's more of like a mid-tone color. Still really impressive looking for a very first project. So here's what the secondary wooden disc plaque thing looks like compared to the original. So this one I engraved it as if it was like a solid color background instead of a grayscale image. Messed around a little with the border as well just because I preferred the thicker border on the outside, but I definitely prefer the look of the second one. It looks a lot better, which you know is to be expected since I'm getting more used to the settings and everything. But you know, not that this one ever looked bad and I did accidentally spill some black paint up there, which is why it's a little gray. I think if you had seen the one on the left without seeing the one on the right, I'm sure we all thought that that one looked great and it's just now that we have this one to compare it to, the one on the right, the second one looks significantly better and sharper. Sticking with the plywood, I really wanted to make a couple of different paint storage units. I like these two designs I found on Thingiverse, which I will link below, but I'm obsessed with keeping my supplies organized and I've always really wanted to laser cut my own paint storage. Storage. It's way more cost effective than buying pre made ones, and it also gives you the option to design your own custom units if you want to. So, here's the first shelf all cut out. We've got two sides, four shelves, four front pieces, and of course, a back. And I figured we would do a bit of a test build of these pieces. I don't want to put it all permanently together yet because I'm probably going to end up painting these white and that's probably going to be done a lot easier if they are in individual separate pieces. I will say after putting these together, especially the second one, I'm not actually sure if it would be better to keep them as separate pieces before painting them. So if you are somebody that has laser cut your own paint storage unit and then painted it, what did you prefer to do? Paint it first and then assemble it or assemble and then paint? Please let me know. And there we have it. It is actually staying together pretty well on its own despite not actually being glued in any way. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned this yet, but this is specifically designed to fit these Tamaya paint pots, which right now I really do not have a good storage solution for. So this is going to be perfect. I don't have a ton of these right now, so this might be good for everything that I have in terms of Tamaya paint at the moment. Just super easy. These fit in perfectly. Obviously I'm being pretty gentle since everything's just being held together by prayers at this point. Yeah, I think this is going to be an awesome solution to organize these paints. And also really fast and fairly inexpensive to DIY this as well. This second paint shelf, which I have the pieces all stacked here, is designed to fit the fairly typical dropper size bottles that most hobby paints and stuff tend to come in. I have a bunch of these already that need better storage and I'm always grabbing more colors depending on projects that I'm working on. Having a lot of storage for these is definitely a necessity in my workshop. So this is the file that I end up liking the most. It has a nice keyhole feature. There's another piece there um, that I can actually attach this to the wall if I want. So we've got some back pieces here. These are also back pieces, although they are the ones with the keyholes. 
sides and then the actual paint storage shelves here. This one, I'm really not sure if it's going to stay together without gluing it, so I do have tape at the ready in case it really doesn't go well, but let's try putting this one together as well. Both of these units only took a couple of 12 by 12 inch sheets. I did resize the paint bottle rack so that it would actually fit on the 12 inch sheets and also just generally be a smaller unit. Before this one, I just moved around a couple of the pieces so that it would more easily fit on the 12 inch square sheets. This one's a bit more finicky, but also generally fits together pretty well. And it fits all of these dropper bottles absolutely perfectly. So overall, I'm really happy with how both of those paint shelves turned out. I'm gonna, of course, need a lot more, especially of this type and even other types of more bottle-specific paints, like the acrylic, like, craft paint tube ones and stuff. But I think I'm gonna stop for there on the paint shelf front and continue on with some different types of projects. Next up, I wanted to try some cast acrylic, specifically making some plaques using cast acrylic. So I decided to apply some of this metal-like vinyl onto a black acrylic sheet. Now I will say, I am generally pretty good at applying vinyl onto surfaces, but for whatever reason, today was not my day when I did this. So there are some bubbles and imperfections that you will see, but I did have enough surface area on the rest of it that I figured I could easily get the plaque out of without them looking terrible. I started off with, of course, running some tests to see how the laser liked interacting with the acrylic since this was my first time using it, and then it was time to have the machine working on the plaques themselves. This was also another engrave and then cut project. So, these things were the first things that gave me any sort of issue. I have a whole stack of the extra ones that I was doing because I was messing around with settings and trying to get it perfect because I realized on some of the first ones that the vinyl was bubbling and I thought it might be due, well, it is essentially due to the heat. So I was turning down the laser uh, power and the speed and stuff and just messing around with it. But I realized that I actually needed it to have more laser power because the bubbling was happening when the laser wasn't actually cutting all the way through the vinyl. So I did work out I think a pretty good speed and laser power ratio for these ones. So I got the four that I designed here. So you have the star map one that I decided to make a little smaller since it is such a small object compared to these other ones. Also because I wanted to see how it would actually turn out in terms of like fine detail and this thing looks really, really awesome. We have a Captain Enoch helmet plaque, which again, those Imperial cogs look really really great considering just how small they are. I mean, like, look at my thumb and it engraved the circle around the cog absolutely perfectly. And then you have Shin's and Balin's lightsaber hilt plaques. The rate I'm going, I'm just gonna have, like, everything in my workshop <laughs> labeled that I've built, but I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with all of these yet, especially since they are such different plaques for things. I could laser cut some feet to go on the pack or print some feet to go on the back. Um, some of these might just sort of like attach to the base themselves, so that's why they're just, you know, the plaque as is right now. So with a little more practice and tweaking the settings, I think I'm gonna get this down perfectly. Even maybe switching up the vinyl that I'm using might make a bit of a difference, but for like a first try experiment, I'd say this was fairly successful. Since the first acrylic project went fairly successfully, I wanted to try something a bit more intense. Now, this was mostly due to the fact that I only had one of these quarter inch black sheets, so if I messed this up, I was going to have a problem, but this turned out beautifully. This might be one of the coolest things that I have ever made, and I know, I'm sure you're thinking, what on earth is this thing? Yes, it's nice and black and shiny, which it is really cool that when you engrave on the black acrylic, it turns white so that you can actually see it and you can also see here just how thick this material is and it one pass cut it no issue but this is a base for my little bd droid i added an acrylic rod to the center hole and also a custom printed holder to support the bottom of his body and this looks so cool i've needed to make him a base for a long time and i never knew what i wanted to do for it but this black acrylic plaque with the jedi meditation circle engraved in it looks awesome for him 
I gathered up all of the projects that I've built so far using the A24 Pro and I figured I would sit down and discuss my thoughts on this machine. Now obviously with these projects I really have barely even scratched the surface of what this machine can do. I wanted to try and keep things very prop focused related since I know that is what most of you that are watching this channel are also interested in. So I know I didn't get around to testing out either of the rotary tools but I couldn't really think of anything really prop specific that would fit into this video using those. I absolutely am going to be making myself at some point in the future a custom water bottle or two with those which I'm super excited about but that kind of didn't really fit into the general theme of this video. In terms of the cosplay and prop side of things something that this machine can also engrave and cut is leather which I can absolutely see myself using in the future. I just don't have any builds on the go right now that need anything like that so there was nothing really at the forefront of my mind that I could do as a test but I know things that I've done in the past that I absolutely would have loved to have used this machine for like Babu Frick's little loincloth and belt bits I hand burnt in all of those very small details which would have been great to have finished in like 30 seconds on this machine. Doing more work with acrylic sheets is also something that I could see in the props and cosplay side of things. I know I did the beady base and the plaques in acrylic and cut it and engraved it and tried all of that out but but a lot of the time there are like little pieces for costumes that need to be acrylic and because this is a diode laser it doesn't play well with every color of acrylic sheet. Clear acrylic you can't cut on a diode laser at least not at this wavelength. There are some tricks that you can do to engrave on it as well as blue and colors that incorporate blue tend to be more difficult with the laser just because it is using a blue light and you know a bunch of sciencey stuff that I won't get into so it doesn't necessarily work great for every color but there's a lot of colors that it does work very well for that I can see myself possibly looking at using in the future to more easily get very specific pieces of acrylic cut to like fit into screens and different like van braces and other costume parts like that. But I did my best to think of a variety of projects that are more applicable to the prop side of things to really showcase all of the different cool things that this machine can do even though I didn't get to every single aspect that you could actually use for props and cosplay. But as for my thoughts on the machine, obviously it's been a very positive experience for me. I know I don't have anything to compare it to, but there really haven't been any problems like at all using this machine, especially since I have never used a laser engraver in my life. The fact that it was so easy to go from like zero to 100 is pretty impressive. It's really nice that this machine comes mostly as one piece. You know, the assembly is very minimal. I watched YouTube videos for like a couple of hours to figure out light burn and that was about it. And after that, I could mostly find everything that I needed and didn't really have anything that that I was having to Google midway in between. I do also think this is a very good size for a beginner. Yes, it's not the largest machine ever, but the fact that the materials that are really readily available, like the wood sheets and the acrylic sheets, they tend to come in 12 inch squares or 300 millimeter square sizes, which is almost the full cut area of this machine. So if you're someone that's not looking at having laser engraving be like their entire profession and don't want to have to look at buying bigger sheets like from a hardware store and then having to cut them down yourself then you're mostly going to be sticking to buying the 12 inch square sizes and that is what this machine can handle perfectly. I did have to move around and modify the file pieces for the two paint storage units but other than that I found this machine size to be more than sufficient for what I was looking at making all of the time. You have seen the various projects that it is able to handle and none of these were even coming close to pushing the limits of its capabilities. So yeah, overall incredibly positive experience using the A24 Pro and as a beginner myself I would say a very beginner friendly machine. Massive thank you again to Adam Stack for sending over this machine and for helping me to finally get into laser engraving. I'm sure you're going to be seeing me use this technology a lot more in future projects. But that is everything so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.